I'm John from Shopkey Party and welcome to a little fireside chat we're having today with uh, an amazing textile artist, Katie Rundle. And we're actually going to be hosting a series with Katie next month in June 23, where we're going to be going through a number of one hour classes throughout the course of four weeks, uh, where we're going to be creating an amazing textile masterpiece. I think that is an appropriate word to use, isn't it, Katie? Um, <laughs> So uh, I'll, I'll bring Katie in uh, now and you can say hello. Hi, Katie, how are you? Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yes. Good, good. Enjoy the sunshine. Oh, I know. The last few uh, few days have been absolutely amazing. Um, now, uh, obviously, this is a series. Now, just to explain to those watching that are maybe new to this, we do hold series from time to time. And sometimes we do different classes, uh, especially with like watercolour artists or things like that. But We've been looking for a way to hold maybe slightly longer um, format classes or lessons because things like, I don't know, oil painting and textiles will really come into this. You need a longer period of time to really pull together uh, the various things and doing it over a four, five, six hour session could be quite draining. So um, what we came up with was to invite Katie to do this series with us. So it's a one hour session each week so it's nice bite-sized chunks but we cover different techniques and different things in each class but by the end of it you should have a completed work that that's that's the theory isn't it Katie? Yeah I, I think it'll work well for this project definitely because it'll allow people to work between each um, class we're doing online as well because realistically this project is going to take longer than the four hours but um, gives people space to continue in their own time. In between. Yeah, in yeah. between. So it's kicking off. It's going to be each Thursday during the month of June and it's kicking off on the 8th of June uh, and it'll be at two o'clock UK time uh, live. But if you purchase the event anyway, you will get the video so you can watch it afterwards and work through things. And we're doing each each week we're doing a, a different type of theme. So I think the first one we're working on uh, the fabric and pattern. So selecting the fabrics. Is that right? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone will have their fabrics, I'm sure, for the first week. Yeah. But it, it will be talking through sort of how you work out which are the, the light, lighter tones and darker tones, which which sounds very straightforward. But if you've got pattern fabric, it can be a bit more complex. And I like working with pattern fabrics and I'm encouraging people to 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 have a few patterns in their in their stash of fabrics as well for the project. But yeah, so we'll go through um, the fabrics um, the patterns within them and the tones. Um, everyone's going to have something different, but I'm just going to talk through how I choose um, the parts of the pattern that I choose for the project that we're doing. And hopefully that will just make people think about the fabrics they have in front of them and how they think they might work because about orientating patterns and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And but I would imagine with your historical just for those that don't know Katie I mean you featured uh, in a number of galleries you featured on the landscape artist of the year and things like that so you've got a huge breadth of uh, different uh, knowledge and experience in textiles and I've, I had a sneak peek some probably years ago when we first hosted you uh, of all the different fabrics you've got and collected over the years and so I think that will be a really fascinating class because we'll be able to have a look at uh, some of the things just for inspiration generally of the sort of fabrics that you pull out and uh, what what inspire you to kind of keep hold of. Yeah but we, we will start the collage on that first one as well. Yeah brilliant and then and then obviously You've got a whole week then to, based on that conversation, to if you need any more fabrics or you're wanting to, to try and grab some more, you can kind of search for other things. Um, and then in the second week, we're going to be focused on the face of, we haven't actually said what we were doing yet. No, uh, we're going to be I, doing... Uh, show, show yes, yeah, right. show it, show it, show okay. it. So, so this is the reference, um, which everyone will be sent. This is the reference photograph that I got license-free from the internet of a hair. So this... Everyone will be sent this image and I would urge you all to print it out, those of you that are going to take part, um, so that you can refer back to it as you're building your own piece of work. But what we're going to be aiming for at the end is something like this, which is a fabric collage, which has then been embroidered into um, and put on a background. Which if I looks it, amazing. Yeah, look at that. You look can the see back. there's a lot of stitching in mind. It does. There doesn't need to be necessarily that much stitching and it can, you know, but that's that's 
that's what we're going are to Are you do. able to just hold it up a bit closer to the camera so that we can see the the stitching a little bit closer? Yeah, there we go. It's you almost see? like contours sometimes I find in, in the work. It sort of yeah. reinforces the the contours of the animal or whatever it is that you're doing, yeah. landscape, etc. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. There's, there's been lots of um, requests in the past for me to do an animal, and it is much more complex than what I've done previously, which have been more simplistic um, um, landscape scenes. And we did an apple, didn't we? Which just, which was yeah. a good, good um, basis for looking at this kind of work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the following, the following Thursday, the fifteenth of June, we are going to be looking at the face of the hair. We're starting off with the face because I guess yeah. that's probably the the most prominent thing that's the focal point in yeah the piece, well it, that, that'll be the most difficult bit in a way to get right the rest it can be a bit looser in a way whatever you fancy but getting things right in the face can make or break sometimes how much you like your piece of work at the end yeah. Yeah. so i thought we'll we'll concentrate on that on the second one but i'll give you some basic tips on starting the collage starting the ears and the body on the first week and so you can you can start building up your collage but when we're getting to things like the eyes and the details around the face structure, um, we'll do one session particularly on that. Yeah, it's all about the eyes, I think. It's the mm -hmm. eyes that are a key bit, aren't they, all the time. Um, yeah. Then the third week, we're, it's going to be focused on the free motion embroidery. And maybe you could just explain a little bit to those that don't haven't heard of that term before, what, what free motion embroidery is. Well, it's it's using a standard domestic sewing machine. Um, normally, when you're, say, doing some hemming or seams or something on your sewing machine, there is there are things called feed dogs um, that come up under the fabric and they sort of move your fabric along like this, metal sort of teethy bits. You just have to drop those down so that it allows you to move your fabric however you want to under the needle. So really then free motion embroidery is like sketching. If you think of the thread like a pencil, you, you thread up whatever colour you want and then you just draw with it on the surface. Um, and it's very straightforward, but it takes a bit of practice and um, you might want to practice on some um, scrap fabric first just to get a feel for it. Um, but if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter either. You just unpick it like you would any seam or. Yeah, yeah, it's quite straightforward, but you so do need a special foot actually on your um, sewing machine as well. So normally it's like a C-shaped foot um, okay. instead of a flat foot that you would use for seams or dressmaking. OK. And and obviously we'll talk about that. But um, as Katie says, maybe if it's if you've done the fabrics and you've laid those in place and you've done all the different uh, things up to that point, if it's new to you, maybe in that session, it's watching Katie having a little bit of experimentation on a yeah. a different thing. Um, so and then maybe then you've got a week then between that and the next class yeah. to really then focus on your own piece and that well, might be the right way to embroidery it. you know if you don't have a machine and you don't want to invest in a pre-motion embroidery foot for your machine even you can right, do yeah. hand embroidery obviously it's going to take you longer but you get you know the same if not sometimes better effects if you're particularly good at it so yeah mm. yeah brilliant and and then the the final week is going to be you've, you've entitled it the finishing and background that's that's yeah. really sort of adding the final touches i guess yeah, yeah, it will be. It'll be probably a chance for people to ask some questions about how they're going with theirs as well. Um, but um, yeah, putting your embroidery onto a onto background fabric. Um, I I actually prefer to have the background in place before I start stitching. Um, so we can we can talk about that on the third week because it's it's quite simple once you've done once you've done um, your collage of the whole hair you can cut it out from the background fabric that you've started on doing your collage and then put it onto or we can build from the on the background piece right from the start um i need to think about that really whether we'll start <laughs> with the background fabric in place which probably would be the most sensible thing to do to be honest yeah yeah, yeah. brilliant well and mm -hmm. that, that's fascinating i'm really really looking forward to uh to hosting this series because it's a little bit different we, we do a lot of painting tutorials and things like that but textiles uh is a little bit out of my comfort zone and i find it totally fascinating because the results especially when you see it at a distance um mm. they look like a painting but you look up close yeah. and oh it's fabric and you know and, and yeah. the free motion embroidery really adds personality to it i think which yeah it is... gives it a whole different dimension it can really bring 
the piece alive, I think. Yeah. And they can look lovely just as a collage, but it just it does it does take them to a different level, I think, once you stitch into them. Definitely, definitely. So um, now we're recording this live and uh, at the end of the show, very shortly, I'll, I'll ask for your questions and we'll ask that to Katie. Um, but for those that are watching the recording, if you're wanting to know how you can join us live and you get the video included as well of this series, um, you can actually save 25% if you purchase all four classes, the series bundle, or if you'd like, you can uh, purchase each one or two of the individual classes. So it's totally up to you. How do you do it? Well, you go over to um, shopkeeparty.com and you click on the events tab at the top. Um, and then if you scroll down and find, they've all got the same image with the hair in it and click on event details. And uh, it explains some of the things we've been talking about. And once I've added this video, that'll be at the top of the page as well, uh, the series introduction. Um, and then you simply click by class or the full series and it goes to Katie's shop. And there you've got you can buy all four for 30 pounds. But if you want to click into a particular thing and watch that um, and, and join in that, um, you can click into the individual class uh, if you want all for you save 25 percent uh add it to basket and check out there and then in the future if you want to watch the videos once you've uh, purchased those you can head over to our website and our tutorial videos library uh where we, we keep all the various different uh video tutorials that we've got find katie on the drop down if she's not at the top uh and uh, any time in the future and you'll see the hair one there once we've added it and you just literally click the watch button and then you'll be able to watch it as many times as you want um and come back uh, and we should we should have it up after the event we should have it up within 24 48 hours so you'll be able to uh then watch it for that next week up until the time katie does her next one uh, and then obviously learn all the new things from that next class as well right so katie uh let me just add you back um, so are there any questions from our live audience now that you would like answered from Katie on this series? Shall I just say that um, we, will, we will be sending everybody um, an actual pattern as such of, of the hair as well so they can follow it, it, it. They can follow it a lot more easily as far as if they're not confident with drawing. Um, there will be an outline and a way of cutting it up into different shapes. OK, yeah. And you'll talk through that as well, I would imagine, in the first class. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. But in case that was holding anyone back thinking, well, how I don't understand how I'd even start. We are making it um, as simple as possible. OK, great. Right. Yeah. I guess I've got a, a an initial question, which is what if you're if you if I'm familiar with textile art, you've obviously you cut the fabric and it's all very loose and it can flow away but you use a particular bonding or something at the back don't you yes to stick I, it. I like to use bond or web on the back of all my fabrics so i i pre-fuse um the the fiber onto the back of the fabric which means once i've cut out a shape and i've placed it where i want it with a with a hot iron i can just hold it and it will stick it will stick so that it won't all move around because yes, holding lots of pieces together in a collage when you want to stitch into it can be tricky otherwise. I have heard that you can use um, like a glue stick, like a Pritt stick if you want. I personally haven't done that. I haven't used it myself, but other people say that works. So it, you know, if you don't have access to Bonder Web, which is, as I say, it's an iron-on fusible, it's, it's on a piece of paper and you iron it onto the back of the fabric, then peel the paper off. And it just, it just leaves this, um, this film that, has a, as I say, will turn to a sort of glue once you put a hot iron onto it. So I'll have a little travel iron with me while I'm doing the classes just that can hold each piece in place. Yeah, it's quite quite effective that because then obviously, mm. and I guess you need that anyway, don't you? Because if you're doing the free motion embroidery, you need everything to be staying yeah. in place as you're doing yes. it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could use pins, I suppose, but you're likely to keep breaking your needle if you hit them when you with your sewing machine. But yeah, you know, there's always a way around a problem if you haven't got exactly what I've got on the kit list. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Anne has asked, has the issue of the noisy machine been resolved? Katie would speak while the sound was off and I'd miss what she was saying. Right, okay. So the technicalities of how we're dealing with the 
sound of what you're talking about while the machine is stitching. Yeah, well, think... that was really my issue, wasn't it? In that I ha I need to learn not to talk while I'm stitching because it, there's the noise counts cancelling, isn't there? Yes, so yeah. I need to just not talk while I'm stitching, allow you just to watch and then speak afterwards about what I've done. I think I think, and I'll hold Katie to that. So what what I think we'll do is Katie will stitch, and if I hear her talking, I'll say <laughs> Katie, right? You'll have to repeat that. And let, yes. Let's not do that anymore. So I think what we'll try and do, we'll try and talk about what we're going to do and then do it on the machine. So we'll kind of work in advance of that. And then hopefully, Anne, you won't miss anything. Great question, actually, Anne. That was that was good because I'd forgotten uh, there was... Because sometimes Zoom has a, a noise cancelling, as Katie said, which it just blocks any sound because it can hear it's a certain disruptive sound. They, it does the same with hair dryers as well. So if you're doing hair dryers, it'll cut that out automatically mm -hmm. but unfortunately it then cuts the the voice out too what what has been you did landscape artist of the year but what sort of galleries have you featured in as well what 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 because galleries when you go in they typically focus on i don't know watercolor paintings or oil paintings or something like that i haven't seen many textile art galleries around but maybe there are no. Well, not I don't know of any. <laughs> so so my work's been taken on in sort of group shows more than anything else. So where there's been um, other kinds of art, so sculpture and paintings and drawings. And um, but so mixed, mixed gallery shows, really, that um, have featured more wildlife generally and landscapes. So the next the next gallery show that I'm going to be part of is a summer show here in Wiltshire. Um, right. OK. Alos Gallery. Yeah. Yeah, because I would imagine it is quite um, niche in a way uh, as, a, as a as a sort of a medium. Um, mm. I, 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 I'm sure there's a, a gazillion textile artists, but you know, just as a display thing, it's probably what the gallery owners don't particularly think to look for. I don't, mm. I don't know. No, no, not necessarily. I suppose. I mean, there are there are sort of big quilt exhibitions where there are art quilts, which are along the lines of what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, textile art exhibitions. I mean, there there are obviously other textile artists and there's one in America who's really well known, Beza Butler, who's got huge um, exhibitions of her uh, textile art. Um, but I'm not quite as world famous <laughs> as she is. Yeah. Don't put yourself down, Katie. We're... <laughs> Yeah. Now you're you're hugely famous in our eyes. So yes. and Anne, Anne said, I love her African animal textile art. I'm green with envy of her talent. No, oh, um, <laughs> the lovely <laughs> comment. I'm sure you you'll do fine with this workshop. It'll be good fun. <laughs> yeah, you you will. Mm. That's the whole point of this. And I, mm. I I think I mean we've not done this with Katie before, but I think the the four week thing because you'll have that week in between. I think it'll be more spread out. You can give, have a, you need a few days after each step to think about mm. what you've done and any changes and you can keep coming back to it. And I'm, I'm hoping that the results at the end of that month will be really astounding. And hopefully yeah. you'll be really surprised at your own results. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what other people create, definitely. Yeah. And I don't want people to feel um, restricted by, you know, the natural colours of the hair but go with whatever colour fabrics they like. Try and stick with a theme of, or a colour palette as such. But um, you can see that I went with sort of purples and pinks in my hair, um, but you, you could, it literally could be any colour of the rainbow that you that you like, that you enjoy, as long as you can get a range of tones within that palette. Yeah. And um, some, some, you know, some good patterns would be great as well to include just to make it as fun as possible. Yeah, the tones are, are really yeah. uh, important, uh, probably the most yeah. important thing. And you, you yeah. can help select that, uh, ignore the colours, just just look at fabric through your um, phone and take a photo of it and then convert it to black and white and you'll be able to see the different tonal values um, exactly. within yeah. the fabric that you're picking. Thank you so much for your time, Katie, today. Really can't <laughs> wait for... Uh, next month it's going to be really great and i hope you can join us for this series uh it's going to be as katie said it's going to be really fascinating to see all the different takes and what we'll also do um we probably won't do it we might do it in the first one i'll, I'll, I'll take a judgment but we'll we'll allocate a little bit of time in the middle of the class 
to get some feedback from audience members on what they've done in the previous weeks and maybe share photos uh, if they've shared it on our Facebook page, for example, we can share the screen and Katie can talk about some of those. So you'll get a little bit of feedback along the way throughout the month, which yeah. um, I think will be really useful too. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, well, um, thanks for your time, Katie, again. And thanks for joining us if you joined us on this live and uh, hope to see you next month. Uh, Katie, can't wait. Yeah. See you next month. <laughs> Take thanks. care. Bye. Bye.